Hey, how are you today? I hope you're feeling great. I hope you're feeling good. I hope things are getting better little by little. And if it's not, I pray again today that God will come show you the truth in your situations. Come reveal to, to you what he's busy doing. That you can walk the right way and step the right way. I want to say, I hope you're ready for some good news this morning. I most certainly was. And I got some. Very unexpected. Very unexpected, this one that we're going to be chatting about. A fresh reminder, as it were, of... Because I was... Often times I, I, I've sat and then I get to a place and I'm thinking, I, I wonder sometimes why certain things just seem like they are not happening and and then it seems like you know it, it but the things just aren't falling off stuff that needs to fall off or go away leave it just seems like they aren't going anywhere and the stuff isn't stopping certain texts just aren't stopping certain bad news is just aren't stopping whatever and then it feels like sometimes this the very thing that i'm working the hardest on <laughs> just it either feels like there's no movement in it at all or it feels like it's getting worse you ever had that bruh i'm telling you <laughs> oh, how often we get a bit a little bit dwarf in these situations i feel but god came in this morning and reminded me of two very things. One is a reminder, I think, and the other one was a reminder of something you asked me some time ago. And every time I get to this space in a situation, the same question comes up again. So a reminder, two reminders, but the second one is like a reminder slash question. So two things. Number one, God never stops working. God is always working. If, if, even if we don't see it, even if we can't feel it, doesn't mean that he's not working. He never sleeps. He's always working. He's always busy orchestrating things for you, for your benefit, for your good. And as I've learned from my pastor, I always sometimes call him his Jehovah Sneaky. He's always up to something. God is always up to something. And I love that saying when... Um, that, that well, I don't know if it's an official saying, but I hear it said a lot, and people love using it as well. Is when when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Oh man, I I love that. As long as we can hold on to the fact that we know God is busy, He's always working, even when we don't see it, even if we can't feel it. Number two, <laughs> you ready for number two? <clears throat> When are you going to draw the line? Hold up, John. What do you mean, draw the line? What is this? What, what, what are you talking about? Way too often, I hear things. I myself have said it at times. God is still teaching me to stop saying some of the things that I say. But I hear it way too often. It's in my genes. It runs in my family. I'm just stupid like that. I'm just clumsy like that. I'm just accident prone like that. That's just how I am. What is this nonsense? What is that? Like Rerach, what is that man? Do you even realize what it is that you are saying? Do you, do you even know? Because I didn't. And the moment God came in and explained it to me, via other people as well, telling me, dude, you are speaking some terrible stuff over yourself. Remember, life and death, the power of life and death, is in the tongue. God has placed life and death in front of us, and He urges us to choose life. And by calling yourself stupid, and by saying bad things runs in your genes, and runs in your family, and you're just stupid, and idiotic, and clumsy, and pathetic like that, you are speaking negative, broken death over yourself. That's what I mean by when are you drawing the line. To stop that. 
Listen to this quickly. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Look at this. Check this. Well, you can't look. Look it up. But listen. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. Not you can be healed or you will be healed or maybe one day, someday, one day. You are healed. And now let me, let me do this move. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 22. These are, when these two verse scriptures hit me, my favorite two, and they always go together for me since that day. 1 Peter 2 24. Who himself bore our sins in his body on that tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So not only are you healed, you were healed. One translation says you have been healed, which I like it because that is one of those continuous tenses in English, meaning it's an ongoing thing. It doesn't stop. It can't stop. It doesn't go away. Once you accept the healing of Jesus, it's there. It's permanent. Tla, ka, finish, end of the line. That's it. I hope this makes sense to you today. You are healed. You were healed. You have been healed. It runs in your family. No, it stops with you. It stops running in your family because Jesus healed the bad genes. Jesus healed the runs in the family. Jesus healed the stupidity, the idiocy, the I'm so clumsy, the I'm so accident prone. The I'm Jesus healed that. It stops with you. So whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, Jesus died for you, for your sins. For everything of the world. He died. He took it upon himself. He died for you. You were healed. By his stripes. Were. Are. Have been. Healed. Now my question is. When are you going to get so fed up. So you draw that line. When are you going to draw the line. Tot hier toe. Any further, that's not enough. Enough now. Stop. It stops with me. It's done. It's in my genes. <laughs> Wrong, by the way. Jesus is in your genes. Did you know that? And I must say that's some some very healthy holy genes right there. <laughs> It runs in my family. Wrong. If Jesus is in your genes, that means you're part of God's family. You're part of Jesus' family. That's some, that's some, whew, you've got some holy anointing running in your family, my friend. That's just how it is. Wrong again. <laughs> the devil has you caught up in a lie. Or in lies, thinking that you aren't better, you don't deserve better, you don't get to have better. Okay, number one, we don't really deserve it, but by God's endless grace, we get to have it. If we are co heirs with Jesus, we get to inherit the kingdom. The kingdom is full of awesome, great, good, amazing goodness, man. I hope you're getting that this morning. Go air with Jesus. That means by God's grace, he has much better for us. Jeremiah 29, 11. His plans for you are prosperity, hope, and future. Good things. And it's, and, and the, oh man, the one translation even says, I know the plans I think toward you. I have for you. Plans to prosper, declares the Lord. It says, a declaration 
People in America have a big piece of paper that they sign called the Declaration. So it's something God wrote down and he signed it. And Jesus signed it with the blood, with his blood. I'm just stupid like that. Oh, I'm so clumsy. Oh, I'm so doff. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Wrong again. Wrong again. You were created in the image of God. And God don't make no junk. God don't make no junk. If God is perfect, that means he looks perfect. That means his characteristics are perfect. That means what he makes is perfect. You can't put all of him inside our bodies because these little bodies of ours just can't contain all the holiness and the perfection of God. So he just gives us a little PC. And because he's given us freedom of choice, we get the choice to increase, to grow, to be better. That's such a... Oh. You have the characteristics of God, if you think about it that way. So also don't let the incorrect measuring tools of people distract you or tell you who you are not, by the way. Because the Bible very clearly and easily teaches you who you are. God is the only one actually who can show you who you truly are. Your true, real, 100% authentic identity. You were created exactly the way you were supposed to be for the job that God has for you. And yes, you, God has a job for you. A very specific, a very particular job for you and your characteristics, your personality, your skills and abilities and things that you are exceptionally good at form part of what you need to do. It's our job to find that. And we find that with the Lord by chasing Him. And again, whether you've accepted Jesus as your Savior or not, whether you've chosen a life to follow Jesus or not, whether he's Lord of your life or not. If you look at the scientific or biological composition of the fibers of the body, of the body, um, the very essence of it has God in it. And, if, and you can go Google it if you want. <clears throat> You'll find the pictures there. What are the main elements I saw that I looked at more than once because I'm astounded by it's almost like there's this beautiful creator that planned everything in such a perfect way isn't it one of the main elements is represented by the letters YHWH which is Yahweh I think in uh, is, is it in Hebrew I think where it is actually written exactly like that there are no vowels and hutas. So Yahweh. Yahweh is God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One of the, um, one of the key components, or a key component actually, the key component I believe, or a key component, of the structural scaffolding of, of um, it's a protein of, of, the, of nearly, I think they said it's nearly every tissue of the body. Of your body. It's called laminin. Now if you go look up and look at what laminin looks like. It looks like a cross. The cross is already in you. A micro-sized design in everything of you. In every piece. In every piece of who you are. Of what you are physically right now. You breathe, your breath calls his name. If you listen to your breathing. We go in and ya yeah, and out way. Yes I'm moving my mouth now. But even if you do it in silence. Just listen. Close right? Are you listening to that? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul writes. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have 
from God. And you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So your body and spirit are God's already. It's the temple. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. It's not yours. It must be the Lord's. Hmm. You have it from God and you are not your own. But you And you even bought it at a price. So something that's already not yours, God still came and paid for. Are you getting this? When we, Even when we were sinners, Christ died for us. When we didn't deserve it. 2 Corinthians 6. Oh, one chapter over. Also chapter 6. Sorry. Chapter 6. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I dwell in them and among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. God dwells in you. Oh, where God is, my friend, evil cannot be. If you have God in you, evil can't be there. Oh, and God is in you. So evil is not there. So what then, John? So how then, John? The lies of the enemy, my friend. The lies of the enemy. All these things that you speak over yourself are evils. False evils, actually. You need to learn the truth. And let's start by hearing the truth when I speak it to you right now. You were created perfectly in the image of God. Before you were born, God chose you. God set you apart. Before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew you. He knew all about you. He knew everything about you. He knew you. The creator of the universe knows you, knows your name. And if you don't know how or what or when or where and all these goodness, <laughs> in this moment I actually think of asking the way think of when you were a kid in your parents house you asked permission for certain things asked permission for stuff in the fridge or stuff in the cupboard or mom can I, dad can I, mom can I, dad can I go sleep over a friend mom can I have some chow, mom can I have a sweet tea mom can I have a cookie, mom can I watch some TV, whatever I know these are silly examples but, but listen to the principle think of when you are maybe visiting friends' houses these days, or in certain places, ask your friend, listen, where's your loo and care? Is it okay if I use it? Permission. Can I this? Can I help you with that? Can I? Permission. Apply that same principle to your life, my friend. Same way with your relationship with the Lord. Apply it in breaking these thoughts of, of this thinking or this way of speaking death over yourself apply it there how ask god how to do it ask god for permission ask him how ask him god how god where god when if you're standing in front of something ask him for permission asking if this is, is this thing even for me lord and if that thing is not for you leave it alone then you sidestep that thing like David Campisi, maybe. Or you dodge that thing like Neo did in the Matrix there. Yeah! Yeah! Dodging bullets. Yeah. And have fun while you're at it. You can have fun. God is seriously joyful. Remember that. But he's also joyfully serious. Serious about you. About your life. About you getting out of that bondage that is holding you captive. God is serious about you. He's especially fond of you. God knows exactly what's for you. He even knows what and who you are. Exactly who you are. The authentic, real, 100% real you. He knows who that is. So guess where you can find exactly how, uh, can find out exactly who and what and how you are. Oh, I'm so excited. My tongue doesn't want to work anymore. <laughs> so I want to urge you to draw that line today, my friend. Trek die streep nou net daar so, tot hier toe en nie verder nie. It's 
stops with you. It stops right here. It stops right now. The curses, the speaking bad over yourself, the stuff you speak over yourself, the, speak, the things other people try and speak over you, that it runs in my families, and the, all those things. It stops right here, right now. Draw the line. It stops with you.